this is our third, this is our third round of one to twelve. We are really looking at um, um, scripture and the step, and looking at biblical principles. It's good to have um, you guys with us today. Um, some of you are working through the um, life recovery program, and um, I hope that this series, which is going to be an interactive series, um, that you can get involved in the workshops in the morning with us, um, and you know that we can all share our knowledge and um, see where God's leading us and where we're showing us in our lives today. Um, so blessings to everyone. This is a basically a, a Bible study workshop. Um, I would suggest that you need a pen and you need a Bible um, because we're going to be going through some scriptures relating to the topic today, which is step one. Um, um, some of us know that through our meetings, well, whether we go to NACA or whatever 12-step fellowship program, we know that this step says we admitted that we were powerless over our addiction and that our lives have become unmanageable. So we're going to be looking at how does this relate um, in a biblical sense. Um, some of you um, have some particular scriptures that you've got lined up, particularly in Genesis uh, and in, in, in some of the platforms that we've got in the Life Recovery Workbook. And if you are going through the Life Recovery Workbook, um, I suggest that you go, um, um, you see somebody within our ministry, i.e. Gemma or um, myself, to really be um, looking at how that we put this forward across um, to our ministry um, because there's certain processes that we look for and and how we do it we do it in a in a different way um, to, to to really come and cleanse our hearts and our mind the bible says we need to be renewed in our minds and our hearts and that's what we're going to be looking at here this morning so first of all um if we was to look at um what Rick Warren says in 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 uh, in the road to recovery, and he um, he wrote a program um, called Celebrate Recovery, and um, in this particular step, it says uh, in, in one of the main principles, it says we must realize that we are not God, and that we should admit our powerlessness to control our tendencies to do the wrong thing. And we must also acknowledge the unmanageability in our life. And if we look at the scripture that's matching that, um, we're going to be looking at Matthew 5, verse 3. So that's the first place we're going this morning. Matthew 5, verse 3. Matthew 5. So if you've got your Bibles and you're there when we read the scripture, please only if you're there at the right scripture, come in, please. And you, 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 you know, I want to be focused. Well, okay, I've got that. You got that, Adam? Yeah. No, so go on, Adam. Go on. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got that. that. Adam, um, hands up. Adam, go. Yeah, go uh, Matthew 5, chapter 3 says, Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Blessed are the poor in the spirit. Yeah. And Co, listen, listen, you know, this is a workshop. So if we want to come in and speak, let's address it through the channel. Let's have some order in here today. Um, so that, let's have a raise dance forum. So, that, you, know, you know, blessed are the poor in the spirit. So they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. So when we're looking at this foundational work this morning here, um, we're not looking to, to to come and talk about who's the most wellis in here uh, you know who knows more than any other person who's got 10 years or 20 years clean time you know and and and, and who's worked more steps than no one this particular scripture wants to look at where we are in our life today do you want to read that again uh, for us adam i want to I, I want you to i want us to really sew this one in this morning 
Yes. Uh, Matthew chapter five and verse three, did you say? Yeah. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I read from my translation because it just is different wording, which is great. It's go, go N- to NLT, it says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who are poor. Yeah, and, and I'll like read from the recovery Bible. Fire away. Yeah, it says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Adam, you know, are you coming again? Yeah, I am. I was going to say, I am reading from the King James version. Really? I'm from. glad we got different translations because it's important. The more that we got, the better it is. So, it's good to see you guys are on the button this morning. So, okay. what we need to look at here, right, is um, we're looking at salvation. Yeah. So I want us to put this from a different mindset now because I'm talking to believers, yeah? I'm talking to believers this morning. Uh, Raise your hand if I'm talking to a believer. Amen. I'm talking to believers this morning, okay? So so here's the thing. I'm not talking uh, in an NA meeting. So please don't take me out of context. I'm not talking in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. I'm not talking in a cocaine anonymous meeting. I'm talking to believers this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Setting us apart for who we are in God's kingdom. Yeah. So so here's the thing this morning, right? What we're looking at here in this particular scripture, we know that Jesus used these words in the Sermon on the Mount. And we also know that there was a 5,000 odd people listening to this teaching. And we also know he wasn't speaking to the 5,000 odd people. He was speaking to the disciples. Hallelujah. And God is speaking to us today as his disciples through his word. Amen. So the sermon opens with the Beatitudes that's a blessing. And the Beatitudes set forth the ideal man for Christ's kingdom. The first blessing is pronounced on the poor in spirit. This does not refer to a person's natural disposition, but to deliberate choice and discipline. These are the two areas that we need to have our mind focused on here. When we're talking about the poor in spirit, we're talking about choice, so our decision-making, and our discipline. Because remember, we are on the foundation of our new walk with Christ as ideal citizens for God's kingdom. So the two things I want us to be aware of when we're setting this parameter of the foundation is two things we're looking at here, is choice and discipline so it's about choosing what we do with our walk choosing what we do with our relationship choosing who we sow ourselves into choosing how we how we how we yield in our relationship with christ choosing how we pray choosing how we i can go on so then we look at the poor in spirit so let's look at who the poor in spirit are the poor in spirit are those who acknowledge their own weaknesses listen to me let's re- let's 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 record this when he's talking about the poor in spirit he's talking about those who recognize their own weaknesses now i'm going to go to a question in the step working guide okay and i want us to open up our mindsets this morning because some of us are seven years clean some of us are two years clean some of us um uh don't even count our clean time some of us are all different stages in our walk however there is one thing that we can all acknowledge and i want us to acknowledge it here this morning in this workshop okay and it's a question in 
the step working guide. It leads us to how did how the addiction, mental health, spiritual warfare, enemy is affecting us mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. These are the four areas that we need to look at in our lives. What's going on mentally? What's going on physically? What's going on emotionally? And what's going on spiritually? Because the question then moves on and it says, da, 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 where is it gone? I had it. Our addiction can manifest itself in many ways. When we first come to the fellowships, our problems will, of course, be drugs or alcohol or SLA or um, gambling, whatever addiction it may be. But later on, we may find that our addiction is wreaking havoc in our lives in a number of ways. So here's a question I want us to pause right now. I want us to pause. And this is where I want some interaction because it just, because I, I opened up this meeting. I opened up this meeting and I told you when God was preaching to the 5,000, particularly to his disciples, there was 80 of them at the time. There was in that, then that being 12. He talked about the disposition here, the disposition of the poor in spirit. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. And I've just given you a breakdown of what the poor in spirit acknowledges. The poor in spirit are those who acknowledge their own weaknesses and helplessness and who rely on God's omnipotence. They sense the spiritual need to find it supplied in the Lord. See, the kingdom of heaven belongs to this type of people in the kingdom. Self-sufficiency, self-will is not a virtue and self-examination is a vice. We need to rely on God's supplication. So now I've moved that question around and I've said, you know, when we come in, we came in with maybe the drugs, maybe this, but we now want to look at what is wreaking havoc in their life today. Does anybody want to come on the platform right now and, 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 and share what's going on, particularly that they might be struggling with? Gemma's hands up. Okay. Is that your hand up, Gemma? Yes. Maxine. Okay. I've got Maxine. I've got Gemma. Is there any more? I've got Leon. Maxine, Gemma, Leon. Remember what I just said. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those that acknowledge their weaknesses, hallelujah, and helplessness. Okay, fire away, Gemma. Okay, so obviously I'm clean and sober from drugs now for, you know, 14 months. That, that side of things still get the obsession, um, but mainly it's driven out of like the emotional nature that needs a lot of work. So what I really struggle with is, um, it's like I have to push against everything that my, my head is, my head and my emotions are telling me to do. So I, I might wake up and I feel the anger or I feel the bitterness. Um, and this, 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 this stuff can really limit me in, um, being consistent in relationship building uh, because I tend to, I just, my brain doesn't work right where I want to. I want to, like, how do I balance? It's almost like sometimes I see relationship building as, as a chore. It's not something I can enjoy doing, right? And it's like, I can see it as like, you know, like when you've got to go and clean, I've got to go and do some cleaning I don't really want to do. It's like, that's how it can feel sometimes to want to form a relationship and it's horrible and God wants us to have relationship you know and that's not right and I know that there's something deeply wrong there with like attaching right with people um so it can really hinder me in my life being consistent because on one hand I feel like oh I haven't really made solid friendships like when I look back on my life do you know what I mean um 
and I can blame others. I think, oh, what's wrong with me? I feel rejected. But actually, there's something wrong in my behaviour because I'm not consistently showing up to be a good, consistent friend for people. Um, so that's one big area of my life that, that really needs God's help. Amen. Amen. So Gemma, oh. um, where are you, Gemma? I'm trying to find you here. Can I uh, make you co-host? So can you write down two things that is that weakness or what is it, helplessness that you want to acknowledge and put it in the chat because we're gonna we're gonna pray about all of this stuff at the end. So the two things you 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 came in and you said some stuff there which was good. I want you to break it down to two specific things that we can acknowledge so that we can break it down in the chat. So the question is, and I want, listen, you know, we're all in recovery. We're all at some certain stages. I want, I want you to, I want you to really look at this question. The question is, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. We've acknowledged who the poor in spirit are, those who can acknowledge their weaknesses or their helplessness. And you just heard what Sister Gemma said. So if you want to um, carry on or think about that whilst this question's going on and you want to share that with us, then that's great. Over oh. to you, Maxine. You're, you're unmuted. Far away. Who's that? Yeah, it's you. You've got your hand. Oh, up. sorry. Okay, yes, I have. Um, I just wanted to agree with what Gemma says. No, I need to know what, what you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. What Gemma said. No, Gemma said no, what no, no. No, sorry, Pastor, it come out wrong. Mine is similar to what Gemma is saying about Brilliant. relational stuff. And every day is a struggle in relational stuff with the people near where I live, with my children, with my family. Um, it's a battle of conflict with every person that I come into contact with. It is a Personal struggle. Relationships. So let's summarise yeah. that. You're saying that your struggle uh, with weaknesses and helplessness is with personal relationships. Yes. Particularly, do you want to, you said, so you, you labelled your community, but then yeah. you labelled every person. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. going, that's going deep. Every person. Oh, it's a struggle. It is um, every, every person. person. That means that my life is a, is a struggle every day. Because every day comes another problem <laughs> i like that. it's all personal so i'll hold on to personal relationships chloe over to you thank you um, sister um, maxine that's good personal relationships is important and it's a big one so that's really really good chloe um yeah mine is mine is boldness um boldness and um and right now patience boldness <laughs> and patience that's oh, good man own weaknesses and helplessness boldness and patience okay that's good it's good it's good i like that i like that we're getting somewhere leon yeah in in poor in the spirit i mean yeah for me to recognize weaknesses that i've gone through i mean like leon i need two things that you're struggling with i don't need a sermon what yeah what i'm struggling with is There's something about the inner man and the outer man, but if, if I know that I've gone through that cleansing process, but Leon, for my recovery, Leon, two things my I wasn't going to move on. Two things I wasn't going to move on. I've got 35 minutes to go for a workshop. What is the two yeah, things? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, is, give me is, what is, they admitting, are. is admitting to some things, yeah? I just want, I've, you've heard the question. If you want me to elaborate right. on the question and you think about it, come back. Yeah, I've asked for two things that you're struggling with. In your walk with Christ, yeah, you might not you might not be struggling with nothing, but I've asked for two things. You've heard what Gemma, you've heard what Maxine said. She struggles with personal relationships. You've heard what Gemma said. I'm asking you, you're next, or do I need to move on? Oh, I, I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. Then I'm not going to say nothing. Lovely. Okay, Connor, over to you. Uh, I'm struggling with. Uh not listening to people and uh, not interpreting people not listening and not interpreting that's brilliant 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 you see you see the spiritual principle of surrender 
is getting on this, not listening. And again, what was the other one, Connor? Not interpreting. Not interpreting. Tell me if you've written but that down. Linked. Not listening and not interpreting. Okay, brilliant. Adam. Um, impatience and sex for me, to be honest. Impatience and sex. Powerful. Then now we're getting now we're going deep. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, as it says in here, I'll refer it back to you, brother Leon. It says the first blessing is pronounced on the poor in spirit. It refers to those who can recognize their own weaknesses or helplessness. So yeah, I understand you... that. I understand that part. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I've gone through weaknesses. I've gone oh, through all these got, areas of weaknesses. And that's where I'm struggling in them areas is like, even when you go through the weaknesses, you know that there's a problem, there's a situation that you have to deal with. But then obviously the outcome of that is like you have to see through the inner man, isn't it? No, you've given me a load of answers. You haven't given me an answer. That's what I'm saying. It's the inside, isn't it? You can't you can't say from the outside, it's the inside. No, no, you can say from the outside. I can tell you right now that I struggle, I'm struggling right now with listening. Well, finances, to what I'm you're just saying, saying finances, because you're going around the houses. And yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That. I struggle tell, with all these I things. I can tell you directly right now. I find that a struggle. Right, okay, right. With yeah, I'll put my hand up to that. Is, and really, it, we want to ask a simple question. Yeah, it might seem like that. It might it might sound like that. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. That's it where it's like that. within so me. That's that's, that's how it can be. That's how it can be for me. And it might sound like that to someone else. But, you know what I'm saying? But it's no, inside of me. There's something there telling me that I've gone through weaknesses, and that is my struggle through the marriage, but that's what it makes it makes it look like. It makes it look like something. Okay, I've still not got you, Leon. Sorry, I'm not with you. Over to you, um, Gemma. Morning, yeah. I've, um, I've, I think I might just help you a little bit. I think what Leon's trying to say is he struggles with being honest. He and, struggles with being honest. And not, and not only that, he did mention finances. Did he? Yeah, he said finances. You know, like I said, it took me a very long time to admit certain things yeah that's where i had my struggles i know in that time i was battling admitting to certain things like how like obviously admitting to certain like admitting to something so leon did Gemma help you there yes yeah, she did okay that's and a thank good you one. for that Gemma. i don't mean to be honest yeah okay yeah and honest. she heard finances finances yeah that, okay, that is that yeah. is a situation that can stir someone up very very powerfully there's something powerless over there, them things. Amen. That's what destroys human body. Thank you, Leon. Can you mute, please? Okay, Gemma, what did we get from that? So read them out. Please. Yeah, so we had um, me and Maxine struggling with personal relationships, managing relationships, building relationships. I've put, it's kind of a fight between the selfishness, isolation and fear, and then being selfless, interested and enjoying them. Um, then we've got Con who struggles with um, not listening to people and interpreting them correctly. Um, Adam, yours was sex. And sorry, what was the last thing, Adam? Impatient. That's it. Sex and impatience. Yeah. Um, Ivar, tolerance. <laughs> um, tolerance. Yeah. Uh, and Leon's is, um, yours is being honest and finances. Money management. Brilliant. Gemma, mm -hmm. do you want to come in? I think Gemma? Chloe, Chloe was oh, in there. Chloe, sorry, yeah. Chloe's oh, was... Um, being lack of boldness and impatience. What what's the difference between what what's the what's the what's the um, the opposite of boldness? Fear. Thank you. Courage. Courage. Fear. So we, we need to we, we need to root it for what it is. Gemma, anybody um, else want to come in? Things I'm struggling with. Um. I'll, I'll come back to me, please. Kelsey? Kelsey? 
Kelsey's hey, out. Yeah. Morning. Yes, yeah, so I really struggle with um, like thinking about the future, you know, like that uncertainty. So worrying. Yeah. I don't know if there's a word for it. Worry, yeah, that's good. Well, that's really good. And um, patience as well. Patience. <laughs> so let's look at this. This is what the Lord said to Zerubbabel. It's not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. That's Zechariah 4.6. Can we write that into the scripture? It's not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And we need to understand, it's great that we've all got our weaknesses, you know, We've all got them. And this is, this is, it, none of us are exempt from these weaknesses. None of us. Yeah, so that's why. Zechariah 6. Zechariah 4, four six, verse 6. Please, if you want to address the, um, the, the meeting, please, could you raise your hand, please? Sorry. Yeah. So, Zechariah 4, 6. So, we need to understand that we have all got weaknesses, all of us. And that was that, well, that's, well, that, that, that exercise was to acknowledge those weaknesses, that none of us are exempt from those weaknesses, but it's how we deal with acknowledging those weaknesses in our life. And if we look at Zechariah 4, 6, it says, then he said to me, and this is saying it to us, he's saying it to us right now, then he said to us, this is what the Lord says to Gemma, Maxine, Leon, Connor, Fausia, Kelsey, Adam, Gemma, Ivor. That it's not by force, Chloe, Chloe. nor by Chloe, nor by strength, but my spirit says the Lord Almighty. So it's important to acknowledge, right? It's by the spirit of the Lord that helps us with our weaknesses. Wants to hold that really there. The spirit of the Lord is going to help you with your weaknesses. Apart from God's powerful spirit, life is like a desert blown to and fro by the scorching winds of depression, defeat, and death but in him life springs up like an oasis to water parched thirsty lands that scripture is in isaiah 44 verse 3 so i want us to mark these scriptures down i want us to be meditating on these scriptures the first one was zechariah 4 6 and the second one was isaiah 44 3 it says, without God's powerful spirit, like, life is like a desert, blown to and fro, scorching winds, depression, defeat, and death. But in him, life springs like an oasis to water parts thirsty to lands. Let's keep moving on. And there is victory in God's life-giving spirit. To overcome the trials of life. He transformed an ordinary man named Samson into a dynamic powerhouse who performed extraordinary feats of strength, smashing away fear. Judges 14. He transformed Samson into the wisest Solomon, into the wisest man on earth, establishing the glory is in Israel's kingdom. He transformed Peter to allow him to walk on water. By the power of God's spirit, Israel defeated their outnumbering enemies and entered into the promised land. With this witness of the Holy Spirit's power on his people, why do we still fall back on our own strength? Anybody want to come back and give us some feedback on that why do we fall back on our own strength maxine adam maxine fire away uh, i think it's because we can let self come in brilliant 
Maxine. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Self will straight away bang. What else, Adam? Imperfections. Very good, Adam. Imperfections. Gemma. We think we know, a bit like Maxine, but we think we know better than God. We think we know better than anyone that's further down the line than us. Amen, Gemma. Okay, Connor. Fear. Fear. Scared. Fear. Yeah. Running scared. Okay, Back brilliant. To so, so what I want you to do right now is I want you to rank from one to eight. Yeah? One to eight. Piece of paper and a pen. If you've got one, use it on your phone. Rank from one to eight the area in your life that you most need spirit life transforming power in the most. I know someone said relationships earlier on, but let's look at relationships. One to eight. How much transforming spirit power do we need in that area? Mark it down. One to eight. Remember, we're looking at the scriptures that we looked at was Zechariah 4, 6, Isaiah 43, Matt 41. All of them said by the power of God's spirit. And at times when we are weak, instead of trusting in his spirit, we need to look at how we need God's spirit in our life. So um, one to eight relationships. One to eight spiritual discipline. One to eight family. One to eight, finances. One to eight, marriage. One to eight, future. One to eight, work. Oh, wow. Just pause on that for a minute. How do we need? So, Can, can you just go through that list again and I'll write it in the chat? Brilliant. First one's relationships. Yep. Second one's spiritual discipline. Yep. Third one's family. Yep. Fourth one's finances. Yep. Marriage. Finances. Marriage, yep. Future. Future, yeah. Work. Work. Other. Other. And the question, whilst we're looking at this question, while we're looking at this exercise, I want us to think, are we willing to admit the weakness and yield to the Spirit's power until we can confess our weaknesses? The Spirit won't choose to move powerfully in your life. As long as we think we're strong without him, he won't empower us to do his work. So we must surrender fully to his power in order to be empowered or we remain powerless in our own strength i'll say that again question are we willing to yield to the spirit's power until we confess our weaknesses the spirit won't choose to move powerfully in our lives as long as we think we're strong enough without him he won't empower us to do his work so we must either surrender fully to his power in order to be empowered or we remain powerless in our own strength i'm going to move us Whilst we're thinking about that, uh, can somebody, um, Brother Leon, he's not there. Brother Adam, are you there? Yeah, go on. Okay, um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Two seconds. Uh, 
Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 oh. reads, And he said unto me, My grace is significant for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ may rest upon me. Who wants the power of Christ to rest upon them? Amen. 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 He said, you come to me, I'll give you rest. Amen. 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 So when we look at this verse here, we can go back to verse six. And, and, and can someone read this from verse 12, um, chapter 12, from six to 10, please? Sorry, Pastor, where are we reading from? Uh, Second Corinthians. Oh, sorry, second. Chapter 12, verse 6 to 10. Who do you want to read that? Anyone. Who's first? Yeah, Who's okay. There? Go. For thou, for thou I would desire to, um, to glory, I shall not be, full, be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or what he heareth of me. And last, I should be ex exalted above measure Th uh, through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Last, least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice. That I may depart from me. Amen. And he said unto me, my grace is um, significant for thee. For my, um, my strength is made perfect, uh, perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproach, in necessities, in processions in uh, distressed for Christ's sake for when I am weak then I am strong amen 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 I want us to focus on the last part what did the last part say you're muted when I am weak I am made strong Let's say that all together. When I'm weak, when I'm I'm weak, weak, when I'm weak, weak I am made strong. When I'm weak, when I'm weak, I'm made strong. When I'm weak, I'm made strong. I'm weak, I'm made strong. I'm feeling tinglings in my body right now. When I'm weak, I'm made strong. When I'm weak, Christ makes me strong. When I'm weak, I'm made strong. No, when I'm weak, no, when I'm weak, Christ makes us strong, Pastor. That's what it says I'm here. Looking at what the it says, says when I'm what yeah, the it says the say? troubles that I suffer for Christ, but when I'm weak, oh sorry, then I'm strong. Thank sorry. You. Thank you. Thank sorry, you. Pastor. That's okay. I read it wrong. His, his <laughs> grace, his grace is sufficient. Amen. For us. Let's go through, let's go through the channel, please. Amen. Yes, so amen. There. It's a workshop. If everyone's shouting, we're not gonna get anywhere, are we? And you're gonna and you're gonna be praying on my weaknesses. Listen, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so Paul, the greatest apostle of all, is talking about the fall in the flesh. We know about this particular section, and he says, If I desire to boast of anything, I need to boast of Christ. So when God is raising us up, we need to be careful. That we that we that we get stripped of our ego, and sometimes we get into that del grand delusion that it's us, it's me, it ain't me. This scripture clearly tells us it's God and the power of the Holy Spirit that's building us up, and we must not forget that. We must not forget when we start moving forward in our lives, when things start getting good. We mustn't stop forgetting about the transition that we've gone through for once, the difficulties, the struggles, 
and then thinking that we did it because we didn't. Very important. That whole section is an accurate description of the life of the servant of Paul Hen and his deep humiliations. You know, I hear people talking on this platform about what they're going through, crying, you, you know, you know, really going through some stuff, but they're pressing on and they're pressing in. We need to take a joy and a strength from that because it's Christ, it's perfect um, um, strength that's working through us to bring us to that point. I think Sister Gemma said it um, <clears throat> the other day, when he brings us to that point where we can't take anymore, he comes in. Hallelujah. We learn that there are many precious lessons in verse 7. First of all, it's proof that even divine revelations of the Lord do not correct the flesh. We might know about our defects of character. We might list them all, but it doesn't correct the flesh. This is where a couple of the programs make the mistake. They think listing the defects corrects the flesh. No, it doesn't. Apostle Paul had listened to the language that he still had an old nature and was in danger of falling into the snare of pride. Remember, we opened up about the key element of the fallen angels was pride. Pride about not telling people about our weaknesses. Pride about not being able to tell the truth, spiritual principle of honesty. Pride about thinking that we're further down the line or better than or less than. Man, listen, the best place I need to know is that, you know, I'm not better than anybody and I'm not less than anybody. I'm exactly where God wants me to be. That's the best thing that I can hold on to today. What was the fall in the flesh? All we can say for sure is that it was a bodily trial which God allowed to come into Paul's life. And there is no doubt that the Lord purposely failed to specify exactly what that fall in the flesh was. We can go through passages of scripture. There is nothing that specifically specifies what that thing was. But we know. It's there so that we can always rely on God. We will never be the finished article until we're up there in the heavens. Amen to that, Adam. The apostle describes the fall in the flesh as a messenger of Satan. To buffer him. In one sense, it represented an effort on Satan's part to hinder Paul in the work of the Lord. And we need to see that in our walk and in our life too. Anything that plans us to stop us, we just um, opened up with um, some stuff earlier on. And Gemma gave us the list. We can refer to that list. Anything that stops us from walking full, forward in our walk with God, stops us from hindering our walk, is part of what Paul is talking about in the work of the Lord. But we know that God is greater than Satan. And he used the thorn to further the work of the Lord by keeping Paul what? Humble. We need humility. Successful service for Christ depends upon a weak servant. Listen to me, child of God. Let's read that again. Successful service for Christ depends on a weak servant. The weaker he is, the more power of Christ accompanies him. It compasses us to preach. It compasses us to teach. It compasses us to, to do the things that Christ wants us to do, not what we want to do. 
And in verse 9, we see that Paul's prayer was answered, but not in the way it hoped for. In effect, God said to Paul, I will not remove the thorn, but I will do something better. That is, I will give you grace to bear it. Gemma is going to give you grace to go through your challenges. I'm going to give you grace, Leon. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you grace, I'm going to give I'm you safe. grace, Maxine. I'm going to give you grace, Connor. I'm going to give you grace, Kelsey. I'm going to give you grace, Adam, to deal with your addiction. I'm going to give you something better. This is his grace. We just remember that although he has not given us what we ask for sometimes, but he's given us what we need. You want my power and strength to accompany? Well, the best way to do that is to do it in a place of weakness. So, we're going to be looking at that. Notice that God says that my grace is sufficient for you. We don't have to ask him to make his grace sufficient. It already is. His grace is sufficient for each and every single one of us. Okay. Just going to do a reading. And I'm going to open it up for general sharing on the topic which is step one, powerlessness and unmanageability. You can either choose to share from the reading or you can choose to share about what's going on in your life. But I want you to relate to this re reading. And it's Acts 9, 1 to 9. We admitted that we were powerless over our, our problems and our lives have become unmanageable. There are important moments in life that can change our destiny. There are often times when we are confronted with how powerless we are over events, over our addiction, over situations, over afflictions, over areas in our life, family, friends, work, marriage, situations. We can just list a few. These moments, they can either destroy us or forever set the course of our lives in a much better direction. Saul of Tarsus, later called Paul, had such moments. After Jesus' extension, Saul took it upon himself to rid the world of Christians. As he headed into Damascus, on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him and he fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. Saul picked himself up off the ground. When he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind and for three days he did not eat or drink. What a powerful fast. Saul was suddenly confronted with the fact that his life wasn't as perfect as he'd thought. Self-righteousness had been his trademark. But by letting go of his illusion of power, he became one of the most powerful men ever. The Apostle Paul. When we are confronted with the knowledge of our lives, our lives that maybe aren't under control, we have a choice. We can either continue in denial and self-righteousness, or we can face the facts that we have been blind to some important issues in our lives. And if we become willing to be led by our recovery, by those around us, by uh, our brothers and sisters, by those we are being accountable to, by the spirit of the living God, by the Holy Spirit in our relationship, then we will have a whole new way of life. And we will find true power. And I'm quickly going to go to 2 Corinthians, verse 4, and I'm going to open it up. Verse 4. 
1 to 2. We look at this particular passage and we see in the first six verses of this chapter that the Apostle Paul emphasizes the responsibility of every servant of Christ to make the message of the gospel plain. Paul had been speaking to a number of people and he says, the same are as always used by forces of evil, namely shameful enticements to sin, crafty jiggling of the truth, use of tricky arguments, and adulterations of the word of God. With regard to the latter expression, nor handing the word of God deceitfully, Paul doubtless alludes to the favourite pastime of these men of speaking to the mix of law and grace. The apostles' method was very different. It, it expressed in the words by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That is the manifestation of the truth. And it may take two forms. We manifest the truth when we tell it out in plain and understandable manner, specifically going out to you, Leon. But we also manifest it when we live it in our lives before others so that we can see it as an example. Paul used both these methods. He preached the gospel. He obeyed the gospel. And in doing so, he sought to command himself to every man's conscience in the sight of God. The first principle we need to understand in this lesson is that we need to meditate, we need to pray, and we need to be open, and we need to obey. The importance of the spiritual handle is for us to work within that diagram that leads us directly to the hermeneutics. Meditate, pray, obey, and be open. We're going to be doing more in that in our um, discipleship class this week on Thursday. Adam's got his hand up. Get in there, Adam. I'm sure we've got... I was, I was trying to find out what scripture it was. That was all. I was trying to find out what scripture it was, and I've got it. I do apologise. You've got it, Acts 9. Brilliant. It's now open. The meeting's now open for general sharing. If you want to come back and share it. Meeting's open for general sharing, Maxine. You can raise your hand. And you can come in. Is there anybody else? Okay, I'm going to take hands. And after these hands, I'm going to go into prayer. So if your hand's not up, don't come back in after, please. Raise your hands. Let's come in. Step one, we can all identify with step one, unmanageability and powerlessness. Is there something you might want us, want us to pray about? You know, is something you might want us to look at? Let's look at it this morning. And let's, 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 let's bring these weaknesses to the table so the Lord can step in. Connor, over to you. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm just thinking back to that reading when he, the guy fell to the ground and then when he woke up, he was blind. Mm. And uh, I was just thinking how that feat would really enhance the other senses. Like, you know, if he's blind, he's going to be able to, he's going to have to concentrate more on his listening. So I was just relating that back to what I identified, you know, problems with listening and uh, interpreting okay. others. I mean, maybe if I just close my eyes and just do an action like that, I might be able to concentrate on what's, what's being said and, and learn, practice some skills of improved listening, for example. Amen. You know, and then trust, trust, tr trust in, in being led, you know, that, that I, by practicing closing my eyes, for example, even if I'm not really closing my eyes, but concentrate on the listening and enhancing the listening skill. That, that's, that. I like that. that's beautiful. Concentrate on the listening. Revelations already going on. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Maxine, over to you. Um, I think mine's just, uh, well, mine's relational, but um Lost you. That's what I've done with. So like it's more love enough so that I feel God's love more. Huh? Amen. More love and to just feel 
more compassion for more, others. More, more love, more compassion. It's not just about myself. It's Beautiful. More love, more compassion. Absolutely amazing. Just the so is you're breaking, Maxine. Anybody want to share? Anybody want to come back and share what they found in their one to eight? Um, little exercise where the spiritual power needs to be transformed. Over to you, Gemma. Maybe you want to think about that as we're going along. Um, yeah, so for that, for that um, exercise, um, it's quite high. So I don't know. It's probably because one of my, what I feel unmanageable and powerless is sometimes being hard on myself or thinking I'm maybe worse sometimes than than I am so I'm not like so I've kind of scored yeah at the higher end for for everything for all of those um questions but it's probably because one of my biggest defects is that perfectionism you know always not looking at what I have done or what I have overcome but always striving to be better and better and so self-punishment um is quite high for me but um yeah i love step one but step one you know that kept me it's it's not a step that we could take lightly and overlook because step one kept me in denial for a long 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 time you know because that dangerous self-deception can be you know well, it's denial. It's not even a case of denial. It is being self-deceived. We're deceived, you know. We think that we think that we might be better in some areas um, than we really are, and we cannot see the the foot. We cannot separate the false from the truth, you know. That's why we need to do the work and have an accountability partner, someone that can speak in and, and show us. So actually, you know, your thinking in this area is is not correct sometimes we might not see the impacts that we're having on ourselves or or others around us and um, so you can't think our way out of a sick mind um so yeah it's really it's you know done the steps um from the na which was quite intense done it ca way and now i've done it from the life recovery and where i'm at today like yeah i'm trying to learn to get uncomfortable you know god knows everything about me anyway but it's even you know like even when i'm walking around the supermarket for example i'm on a budget right and i get i get i sometimes want to steal okay right. it comes up in me and it's like that thought like you could easily nick that because i used to do it just for fun and it's like well no because i'm practicing honesty today and i'm i have the fear of the lord today and i know that even if i did that i believe he's going to chastise me in another area so it's not even worth it you know it's not like i can just abuse the grace and say oh please forgive me lord like it, it ruins my relationship with god afterwards i'm in guilt shame and i can't really pray and worship god because i know i've just willfully sinned when there was no reason to do it you know so I just, yeah, I'm trying to practice that re relying on God more and more. Um, I really am trying to put that into practice. It is really difficult. Sometimes I question a lot, like, is the mental health challenges, the fawn in the flesh? Like, will I ever be free of it? Will there be an element of it? I don't know. Only God knows. But all I can do is do my part, which is to keep confessing and to keep showing up, to keep giving this stuff to God. Um, and it's really painful. And um, there was one that I had to really, I cried my eyes out and I'll just share it on here because I'm just being honest. I cried my eyes out a couple of days ago and it was really painful to get brutally honest with God. But I said that generational spirit that's been in the family. So like where my parents might lose that self-control in the moment um, or shout at us or see us sometimes in that moment as a burden, like, oh, you know, that aggressive manner. I sometimes, you know, can do that to my son in that moment, that lack in patience. And it's like the things that are, uh, have been paining me for years about what my parents done to me 
it's like I'm just doing that it's like a natural thing that's uh, learned behavior and it's very difficult to to break that and I can't do that unless I have God's power but that's going to help me first of all identify that this pattern is familiar this pattern is generational and actually um it's very easy to fall into that and the same thing I've blamed my parents for I'm now doing and it's like ah, oh, now I see like the hypocrisy and almost that's where a little bit of grace is starting to come in and change my thinking towards my parents you know some days I'm stuck in like oh you know they're doing it on purpose they're horrible they're mean they're and then sometimes I have a bit of grace come in where God's like, but you, you can see where without God's power, we're just going to fall into, into the traps, these same generational cycles. Um, so yeah, it's just, I need to rely on God for everything, you know, everything, even like it, I'm trying to rely on him for basically, yeah, every part of my day. Um, and the more I press in and get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable, the more I feel actually feel empowered. Because once I've spoken it out and I'm like, God, I'm really struggling. I'm like, wow, it feels so good. But when you can't confess it and you're trying to struggle with it in your own strength, it drains you, it's debilitating, it, it sort of handicaps you. Amen. Beautiful, Sister Gemma. That was absolutely beautiful. The only thing that keeps us from his power from flowing is for our own unwillingness to surrender control of our life to his sovereign will. But we must understand that all things are possible with God. Confess our inability, just like our sister did. Declare our availability to his spirit, just as our sister did. Then, when we can do that, we see what he requires from us. When we admit that we can't, but he can. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus. We just want to pray that, that we just lift up to you this morning, Lord. That we admit that we want to surrender fully to you, God. We want to surrender everything to you, Lord. Lord, I'm, I, my biggest challenge when I got to step three was that I knew I wasn't surrendering everything in my life to you. Lord, let us use this process of one to three to look at areas in our lives that we are not surrendering to you, that we can give to you in the name of Jesus, that we can get to these places that are, that are wreaking havoc in our lives, addiction, afflictions, mental health, trauma, that you can break them down by the power of your Holy Spirit, God. Father, we thank you, Lord, to forgive us for not surrendering everything to you, as we come to you today, Lord, we can see our own strength and our own weaknesses, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And that we can come to you, that you can guide us from now on, so that we can stay connected to your will, Lord. That we can do your will and not ours in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, as we just pray this morning, Lord, as we, as we ask you, Lord, that in the beginning was the ever-present Spirit of God, which hovered over this formless mass of heaven and earth. For us human beings, creation must have something to do with the work that's included in our bodies and in our brains from our Creator, the Lord God, Jesus Christ. Father, cleanse our minds and our brain cells right now and our organs right now in our bodies. Renew us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to this place that we can continue to check up on the things that of, of you that will empower us to make changes in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus that will empower us to to look at areas Lord where we need your spirit Lord what new things is God's spirit creating in our life right now breaking down those strongholds in the mighty name of Jesus Lord Father Lord I beg you, Lord, that you that you break down those strong towers, Lord, those deep-rooted, uh, ingrained gear, hallelujah, that we've conformed to the patterns of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father God, that we can pull down those strongholds through your power of the Spirit that lives inside of us, that your Spirit will outpour through us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. So that we can be a revelation to others, so that we can be the lights, the light that you talked about in the mighty name of Jesus. 
So people will see what happened there. And we can say it was Jesus. Hallelujah. It was Jesus that set me free from that addiction. It was Jesus that set me free from that gambling. It was Jesus that set me free from that fornication, from that porn, from that lust. It was Jesus who set me free from that stealing. It was Jesus who set me free from that criminality. It was Jesus who set me free from that impatience. It was Jesus who set me free from that fear. It was Jesus who set me free from that doubt. It was Jesus who set me free from that lack in the mighty name of Jesus. It was Jesus who set me free from that doubt. It was Jesus that set me free from that worry in the mighty name of Jesus. It was Jesus that set me free from that depression. It was Jesus that set me free from that anxiety. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise your name this morning, Lord, that you renew, that you restore, that you create us to be more Christ-like, like you. Father God, we beg you to allow your spirit to work through us in the name of Jesus, creatively in us, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, let your spirit transform each and every single one of us, Lord, today, in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will give us new abilities, Lord. That you'll give us new strengths to face every situation in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every situation in our life. Our families, our children, our personal relationships, our spiritual discipline, our finances, our future, our work, our others in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come to you this morning, Lord, as my brother said. Come to me, all those who ever lay. Let's come to you as your children, Lord. Uh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we come to you today. We thank you, Father, that you are here with us, that you meet each and every single one of us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you are here with us right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, we lack nothing because of you. Father God, we pray today. You are here with us. That each and every person, Lord, will move towards you. That we know our greatest mental weakness is a failure that will never achieve our goals in you. Amen. May God bless you and may God keep you. May God shine his face upon you. May God give you his peace. Sister Gemma or Sister Gemma, do you want to tell us about what's happening tonight at 8 p.m.? Your new lovely series. <laughs> week two. Yeah, we're on week two this week. Um, we will be looking at identifying the positives about ourselves and what the word of god says and i finally get my wish to join the ministry of the women's meeting tonight hallelujah my prayers have been answered it's been nearly over a year and i get my wish tonight hallelujah minister Iva is with the women tonight glory to god i'm so excited hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. See the joy of my Lord. I'm seeing that I'm in the women's meeting tonight and I don't have to feel left out. <laughs> so join me tonight. We're going to be looking at um, these areas. Again, we're going to be workshop based. We're going to be in the place where we can, you know, be in the presence of the Lord where we can really have some fun in the scripture tonight and let's really just bring it to life. So I'm looking forward to seeing you lovely ladies tonight. Invite a friend. Maybe go out and let's go some finish um, doing. Sorry, what time is that this evening, huh? Uh, sorry. Uh, Leon. Eight o'clock. What did you say? How, how do is I it? put it that you're not invited? Bless you. Okay, well, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> It's only for the women, Leon. Don't it's worry. It's only for the women, Leon. Oh, okay, that's good. Oh, bless you. Yeah, bless bless you, women. Oh, bless you. you All good pray, for you, yeah? You can, you can pray for us, though. You, yeah, we will. Oh, bless you. We love you, Leon. 
you can invite your lovely wife if she wants to come. Sure yeah, I mean, I'm I sure do try to you the the from time to time, but you know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know God is with her, you know, and God's doing the work in Denise. I heard you guys had a great meeting last night. Uh yeah, we did actually as a ghost. Yeah, it, it was it was a good meeting. Brilliant. It did actually uh, go quite well. Like I mean, the Holy Spirit, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you want to press out? In fact, Leon, do you want to give me one of your questions in, in step one? Pick one that stood mm -hmm. out for you. We'll say that again. Your book. Have you got your book, your life recovery workbook there? Yeah, I've got it in front of me. Okay, pick two questions to read out to us. What 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 you've what you what 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 helped you in your step one? What helped me in my step one? Um Yeah, in my step one, this um, yeah, it helped me to uh, just really understand about humility and uh, all these things that I've experienced, but also knowing the transformation of what Christ has done for me, but also uh, exploring the powerless, knowing that God's plan is for my life and uh, I can turn to God in my situations, but knowing that where, you know, God has put put me in a place that where I've been at rest, I've been able to, uh, you know, take time out to think about certain things that I've experienced and going through in my journey. And, uh, you know, just being able to admit to certain things. I mean, like, you know, it's just admitting and obviously, you know, look, problems that I've gone through, but, you know, not creating a problem out of something, but making a problem of prob like problems, not actually solving my situations and actually dealing with them in a way that I can uh, express myself and actually speak about my situations and actually be open, uh, you know, in these things, you know. But with, without an admission of powerless, you know, we we all go through that rebellion. You know, we've gone through rebellion, and I've know I've gone through that rebellion nature, and that and that's just of me. But I know that that's something I've been able to go through. But I have to let go of um you know seeking the pride as well, like you know them things that I have to let go that prideful nature in me, you know, and that's just within you know the flesh and everything that's within me. But even receiving the power, and I I have that choice, you know. There's a choice that we have a choice to do these things. And, uh, you know, we have to admit to accept our powerless. And uh, I think without all these things, like, you know, really knowing what kind of influences that I went through my addiction, you know, it was actually a real, real struggle. Like, I actually went through some depths in times that I didn't even ever think I was ever going to be normal again. But in my person, like, in, in who I was, because I had, like, an addictive personality. But... You know, I had to let people go. I had to let go of the things, you know, the things I didn't want to do anymore. I didn't want them things in my life no more. But I had to turn to God. But also, there were times that I felt really run down and I felt like, you know, I wasn't going to be able to find my strength again. But I knew I was able to find strength in the Lord. But also, as, as I came to this recovery, you know, it was like working through this. But, you know, when I first come to step one, it's like, where do I start? Like, how, how, how do I go about with this, you know, when I've gone from all that to where I am? But then it but it, but it, it reminds me of certain things that I've gone through, but I'm able to recognise that, you know? And it's about recognising the painful experiences that we've gone through, but knowing that we can overcome them things. Yeah. But knowing that, you know, just about being enough sober, but even that sober mind that I had, but even... At times when I went through my relapses, I didn't even understand what I was going through and where I was going. But I needed recovery. I needed to go to this place where I could go, like, you know, to that place where, you know, being positive about my opinions, but also being open about certain things, but asking for help. But, um, you know, even uh, surrounding myself around the right people as well, because, um, you know, through the drugs and the alcohol, you know, they, them things were the influences of me, but obviously I knew that I was using and abusing, but them things, it's like them things I did not want, 
of my life. That was there was no life in that. There was nothing I could see myself through that until when I came to Christ. I knew there was that acceptance, accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior, but knowing that I could turn away a turn of repent on my sins, and that's what I kept doing. But I knew I kept going to the cross. I kept going to that place with him all the time, but I knew Amen. it was recovery, but I've now found my rest in him and I've Amen. been able to rest in Christ and rest Amen. on his word and, you know, just be seeking and, you know, just, you know, just focusing on the things of God, God you know, and not things of the world and being conformed of all these things around us that, you know, can draw us back into that sinful nature again God. and again and again. But, you know, he, he gets us back up and, uh, you know, that's the transformation of what Christ's done for me, Amen. but also being that victim, you know, the enemy tries to make us look like a victim of that. But, you know, when we turn to Jesus, we know that he took that suffering and that shame for us. But even at times when I felt like I've been in prison in my mind, like it's been in prison, it's like it feels like you're in a trap. It's like, where do I go? Where's my direction? I have nowhere to go. But I knew I could go to him. I knew that that's where my place is in him. But also, you know, it leads to a lot of things. But I now found the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And that's all we need is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And also I had the willingness to be able to do this. But, you know, it's been willing to do that. And, uh, you, you know, at times it feels like we're blinded. You know, we can be blinded by these things. You can tell but, us you know, more in a couple about of weeks. Though. as well. You can tell us more in a couple of weeks, yeah? Yeah? And we can, and can you find me that picture? But yeah, it, 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 it was all down to do, it was all down to like my rebellion. Yeah, but I had Leon. rebellion natures in me, but Leon. now God sees Thank my you, heart, Leon. you know, I can overcome Leon. everything. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Absolutely amazing. Awesome. Did you get my message yesterday, last night, by the way? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I'm going to check them now. God, yeah, please do. God bless you. That was fantastic. Awesome. We're going to hear more of Leon in two weeks' time. He's going to be yep. sharing about what God done to him, how he's transformed him. He's going to elaborate a little bit more what happened in his accident, and he's going to give you a God's speed testimony here on Faith Walk about the transformation yep. of what God's done in his life. And that's there in two weeks' time in Faith Walk. May God bless you, brother. May God bless you and keep you. Adam, yep, thank you've got you all. today's reading from the Just for Today book. Do you want to read it for us? The Just for Today reading, yeah. Um, July 20th, step one. We admitted that we're powerless over our addiction, that our lives have become unmanageable. Step one. The first step begins with we, and there, there is a reason that for that. There is a great strength in making a verbal admission of our powerlessness. And then we go to a meeting and make this admission. We gain more than personal strength. We become members, part of a collective we, that allows us together to recover from our addiction. With membership in NA comes a wealth of experience. The experience of other addicts who have found a, a way to recover from their disease. No longer must we try to solve the puzzle of our addiction on our own. When we honestly admit our powerlessness over our addiction, we, we can become the search for, the, for a better way to live. We won't be searching alone in good company. Just for today, I will start the day with an admission of my powerlessness over addiction i will remind myself the first step starts with we amen and know that i never have to be alone with my disease again amen god bless you amen amen I never have say, to be I alone i just want to say i just want to say leon never please, alone. i just want to say that we are always more vulnerable when we are unaware of the enemy's presence our illness our disease our afflictions we are always more vulnerable when we are unaware of the enemy's presence. And I'll close with this. 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be, self, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, 
looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. We are in danger when we need to realize that by nature, the danger risks evil, wicked, cruel advisory is about. He's about. He's about. But we also must remind ourselves that we have the power of the Holy Spirit to resist the accuser, to resist the prowler, to resist the devil, and he will flee. He will devour everyone that he can devour. Don't let it be you. Peter uses two descriptive terms, an illustration from an animal kingdom to characterize the dangers that we face for being a weak or a believer that's in praise. So let's say, for instance, we are in our early walk, that we are babies. We need to wrap ourselves around people and God who can help us walk in our faith. Let's not walk alone. Because when we walk alone, as it says, we, we are easily able to be picked off. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God shine his face upon you. Peace, shalom, in the name of Jesus. Blessings to all. What a lovely Amen. morning. It's been so lovely. Guys, ladies. It's been a great experience. I'll speak to you soon. Amen. Thank you so much. Take care. Ooh. Bye. Thank you so much, Ivo. It's been an excellent experience and a half. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. Amen.